Facebook. Um, sorry, it's saying that my connection was low. Um, okay, so it looks like we're good. <laughs> so, good afternoon, Facebook. This is Sister Lene. I am coming back with another video. And today, I am going to be talking about Jesus is the atonement for sin. So, yesterday, I was reading Exodus chapter 29. And as I was reading Exodus chapter 29, um, I kept coming across the word atonement. Atonement, atonement, atonement. And I know that this um, chapter, it talks about um, the ceremonies of consecrating the priests and how and when to do certain offerings. But the word atonement just kept sticking out to me. And so atonement, what does that mean? So let's go over that first. And hi to the people that are watching right now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, atonement, what does that mean? So atonement means reparation for an offense or injury. Um, but the second part of that definition is key. It means reconciliation. So reconciliation of God and humankind or humanity through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ. And so I was like, man, this is so powerful. Exodus chapter 29 and, and the meaning of atonement. So we know that Jesus, I instantly thought of Jesus. Oh my gosh, Jesus, he is the atonement for our sin. And so that we know that his blood, it cleanses us and it sanctifies us to be in his presence because we know that he is a holy God. We know that he is a righteous God. And we know that it's his blood that was shed that allowed for all of humanity's sins to be paid for. The debt has been paid for. We just have to choose him. So as I was meditating on Exodus chapter 29 and then as I was focusing on the word atonement, I thought of Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. And I'm going to read that. If you have your Bibles, please turn there with me. Um, but if not, I will go ahead and read it. And it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you up on the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So as we can see, it is the blood that has been shed that makes an atonement for us, for humanity, for our sins. And so we know that Jesus, he was that lamb that was spotless, that is perfect, that's without blame. And as I was reading Exodus chapter 29, um, verses, we could say 38 through... Uh, 38 through 41, it speaks of um, the burnt offering and how they would offer up the lamb in the morning and they would offer one lamb in the evening. And so in the book of Exodus, they was talking about a, a, a physical lamb. But my mind, knowing that Jesus is the atonement for sin, I was like, okay, the lamb is symbolic for Jesus, for Jesus being slain. And so out of those verses, Verse 41 stuck out to me, and it says, And the other lamb thou shalt offer at evening, and shall do thereto according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof, for a sweet savor, a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. So the lamb that was offered during this offering in the book of Exodus, it was as a sweet-smelling savor that was being offered unto God. And so... My mind was just like, wow, this is powerful. This is deep. Jesus is that lamb. He is symbolic for that lamb that is a sweet smelling savor that was being offered unto God, our father. And so if we finish off Exodus chapter 29, the last two verses, it says in verse 45, and I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. And verse 46 says, and they shall know that I am the Lord, their God, that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. So the Lord, he is our God, and he wants to reign in our lives. But 
we as people, we have free will. We have a choice to make. Either we are going to choose to accept him as Lord and Savior in our life and allow him to reign in our hearts and reign in our minds, or we're going to choose to walk according to our own ways, which is not going to be from the Lord. And we know that if we walk in ways that is outside of him, outside of Jesus, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then we are going to perish. We are subject to damnation. And so I want to end with 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. And give me just a moment here. <clears throat> All right. First John chapter two, verse two. And it says, and he is the propitiation of our sins. Who is that? Who is he? Jesus. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So God loved us so much that he sent his only son, that's Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, to pay the debt for our sins. And not just for me, not just for you, but for all of humanity, for everyone. It says for the whole world. That he willingly died for us. He willingly died on the cross for us. He did not have to do it. But in that verse, he is the propitiation of our sins. He is the reconciliation of our sins. Jesus is what brings humanity or brings people back to God the Father. Because we know that in, in order to get to God the Father, in order to have access to heaven, it is through Jesus. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. We do have a choice to make. Are we going to choose to have Jesus reign in our lives? Are we going to choose him, which is the way of eternal life? Or are we going to choose to walk in ways outside of his will, which is going to be punishable? It's, it's subject to a second death. So I love everyone. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Um, and as the Lord wills and permits, I will be making other videos, but just remember the message for today. Jesus is the atonement, the reconciliation of our sins. So, all right. See y'all until next time. Bye.